So thank you for joining us for another episode of This Is Who I Am Now. And I'm really excited this week to bring on Lindsay Helen and Karen Hutchinson. And if you watched um, last week's episode, you may remember that I was sharing about why I felt it was important to um, be coming on and and sharing where we are now. We've all been through this journey of awakening and still going through this journey of awakening. And I don't know about you guys, but I realized I realized a few months ago that actually what I was doing this time last year or even 18 months ago is so far removed from what I'm doing now and I felt like I needed to update my audience to what I'm doing now and who I am. So I will share a little bit more about my journey um, at the end of the episode but first of all I want to invite Lindsay to share a bit about where you are in your journey and Lindsay I am so delighted to introduce you as the CEO of mm. New Beginnings, yeah. which um, just fills me with so much pride and joy because we first met, I can't even remember mm. how long ago, a while mm. ago now when we yeah. were both um, in a book writing group. Mm. So a lot has changed for you since then. So please, yeah, yeah share with us. A bit more about who you are now um, and and the book is still on the go mine's not published yet but it's still on the go um yeah no as you said we were in very different places when we first when we first met um so really I, I feel like I'm I've been on a little bit of a fast track um of an awakening process um I've spent much of my life not really getting it, not really understanding it, and um, at points not wanting to be here anymore as a result of that. And um, I've experienced the substance misuse, the alcohol misuse, um, and obviously my main story and, and, and what I now help through my awakening process and through my experience, I've combined the two um, and now help other women through domestic abuse um, survival and how not to return to a pattern of behavior that for some unfortunately can just become all too often replayed um, and so yeah so it's been it has been this has all happened for me um, in we're talking October 2018 was my introduction um, to initially the law of attraction mm. um, and that was through uh, the wonderful uh, Mel England, who many of you know, um, and many of people in this circle know, um, round her kitchen table um, with Amanda Farrar and uh, Victoria Spencer, explaining what was suddenly like, like little snippets of like, God, this makes so much sense. Why didn't I know this? Um, and then read the wonderful Sarah Morgan's book, um, which just was such a nice introduction to how it could be introduced into my life, especially with a small child in tow. Um, you know, sing, single parent, didn't have much childcare at the time. Um, and had only just found a home, having been homeless for five months at the time. So everything had just slotted in. How I find my home, didn't know it at the time, all inspired action all led, all my higher self is now, um, who's called Kyra, she wanted me to introduce her. Um, she is so part of my life, but in everything, um, I think what's been wonderful with the, the recent 30 day challenge um, with Liv and Raff, the um, authors of the Believe book, um, what was so fantastic was just the introduction of Ask her, ask her what you're going to eat for lunch. Like those kind of like, just you can completely go with the flow. Um, the, I mean, the one thing I have to say, like to Kyra this morning, balance. 
I, I asked for balance so much this morning and she is the reason that I remain calm um, and collected with a toddler that wants to throw toddler tantrums, you know, and all of those kind of, it's not just the work, it's everything that you can bring your awakening and all the tools that you can use and um, your higher self. It's not, I think there's still that um, within the world is a general thing that this spiritual concept has to be in the middle of a woods like living under the stars and all you know this very sort of far off hippy dippy version of spirituality and actually what I really like to show people is that it it's in your life now it's in it can be take whichever form works for you and your higher self can be such a massive guidance yeah for that um and it's just it's given me the self-confidence and the belief as well as the guidance on like day-to-day -day what I should be doing the practical aspects it's let go of um allowed me to let go of things that I don't need to be concerned with anymore things that would have previously taken so much energy and created such a negative um feeling and, and put the wrong kind of energy towards things that you're trying to achieve because you're getting hit up on something that's not working well concentrate on what is and go down that path and see where that leads you um and as a result we've we've gone from a piloted peer support um group supporting female survivors and their children um from just hosted by the local council um, and we became our own charitable standalone charitable organization February this year a year on from the pilot um, I'm now running I'm not just peer lead I'm now running it I'm the CEO we're looking at funding opportunities we're working with the big hitters in the in the domestic abuse crisis side of things so that we're really going to be able to help so many um, women and children come through this we've got some amazing people jumping on board and of course it all feels so right because it's all there it's all opportunity that universe already had planned that my soul contract already had um involved and in, and in their line there for an opportunity it's it's the awakening is really to me the, the awakening has been that opening up of the possibilities of seeing what can be in front of me and that actually the only thing that was getting in my way was me um i do apologize i'm i'm starting to well up oh, because i just wanted to acknowledge how amazing that is what you have achieved is phenomenal and yeah. it's only the start yeah. and i just yeah it's i'm i'm kind of lost for words but really feeling the power of your achievement thank you and i think i've always felt we've had a real really strong connection because our backgrounds although timeline wise etc have been difficult there's we've had a lot of similar issues and we've overcome a lot of similar negativity and i think it's it's really lovely especially to have someone that's had such a similar kind of journey and then is now on a similar journey on from the awakening side because there's a lot of people obviously with what i do now and i'm sure you've had this as well where you have a lot of people that have come through so so they may well have had in my situation had abusive relationships they may well have as a result of those abusive relationships dealt with substance abuse misuse one way or another whether it was them personally or whether it was their perpetrator but when you then don't have the follow-on conversation for someone that's open enough to have the spiritual conversation yeah. and the and, and and isn't truly awakened yet they still have that um that negativity and that's yeah. what i really want to um use what i've learned to break in that actually it's that whole if you're sticking to that resentment and you're sticking to the you know like at the moment there's just comments of like oh well you know i hope that I hope covid 19 seen my perpetrator and, and all the rest of it if they're thinking like that then they're not truly free yeah 
they're not going to truly be able to live like the life that they can because there is still even if it's just a flashing comment they're still living in the past and creating that negativity and that to me like all the stuff that I learned we do a lot of like mindfulness practices a lot of emotional intelligence um and a lot of just the smaller things that I'm bringing in now of just helping them let go because I think that's one thing that you know I can truly say I thank for my past because I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for my past Mm. and I wouldn't be able to impart um both spiritual knowledge and sort of past experience that wouldn't be able to help anyone if I hadn't have actually come through it um so it's I remember speaking with Sarah Morgan ages ago going oh my god it's only taken me nearly 40 years <laughs> just like well the, the journey's as long as it needs to be you know yeah. and, and like they say the universe will keep sending you the same lesson until it clicks yeah um and I'm just really thankful that it has clicked now and the the journey that's that's happening I mean it really like Liv and I say it's, it is it's wondrous when you when you open your eyes to this way it really is yeah. wondrous and it makes such a huge difference yeah 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 just yeah just feeling the truth of those words so much and I think as well one of the things that um I'm sorry I'm kind of like well I'm trying to say something and then and then it's it's going it'll come back (laughs) <laughs> it'll come back I'm just yeah maybe I, I need to just leave it there because I think what you have shared is so incredibly powerful and I encourage people to listen again to what you have shared because the 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 power is I think for people on the on the healing journey and when you've and when you're healing from abuse whether that's childhood abuse or whether it's abuse as you know as an adult when you're healing from that it's so easy for for one to get caught up in the poor me you know Mm. this happened to me it wasn't my fault um and it's not fair Mm. and no it isn't it isn't your fault (laughs) no it's never anyone's Mm. fault but there needs to be that shift from um from holding on to the resentment in order to feel the the true emotional freedom absolutely you know and and that journey takes as long as it takes and and for mm. me um it took over 30 years you know from the time when i i i first realized i started remembering mm. my own childhood and and wanted to do something about it that the journey for me has taken mm. over 30 years now that's not to say that it's going to take that long for everyone because yeah. I, I know that part of my destiny was very much um, having to take the slow route, <laughs> having to take the hard, the, learn, find out what it, the hard way mm. in order to be really able to understand and empathize with those that I'm, I'm being mm. called to help. And I think that's, I think that's true for a lot of healers and I would class you as a healer as well in, in the work that you're doing. Um, we, we have to tread that path in order to be able to truly um, empower others to move forward. So thank you so much, Lindsay, really thank appreciate you. it. And just to let you know, I, I am aware we're not, we're not live on Facebook, but that's okay. We're recording. <laughs> okay so my next guest that I want to introduce you to is Karen Hutchinson and Karen is a spiritual life coach she is also one of the founding belief practitioners 
there was only a few of them in the first round so congratulations mm -hmm. Karen I know that um, it probably wasn't an easy journey for you. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, um, when we talk of Believe, we're talking about this, this book, which is guiding a process of awakening um, as channeled from the Abraham and Jesus Collective to Olivia and Rafa Kanya. And if you need, if you want to find any more information, you can find them on Fifth Dimension Earth on Facebook and also their website. Um, so yes, so Karen, you're one of the very first Believe practitioners. So yes. congratulations on that. Thank and um, I'd love you to share a little bit about what that means for you and, and what it is that you are doing on your journey now yeah so um gosh so a bit like Lindsay was saying you know I'm quite a late bloomer in the spiritual world <laughs> you know the ripe old age of 48 now so um I only really connected in with again starting with law of attraction and um you know Abraham Hicks and that I was always you know felt drawn to non-physical, felt drawn to the positive side of life, if you like. Um, but it was only really in the last couple of years that that really started to develop. And I was very, very blessed to be able to go to Soto Grande last year, gosh, March last year, for the very first Believe um, course, workshop um, with Liv and Raf. And you know, when you have those moments where you just go, this makes sense. This makes mm. perfect sense. And even though I probably spent the whole of the three days with my mouth open going, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I call it open mouth syndrome. It all still resonated and just, I could really feel the truth of it. And it was only going through then, through my awakening um, um, journey with Liv and Raf that it all then started to really unfold quite quickly. And, you know, um, awakening can be a rocky road, can't it? It can be full of highs and quite a few lows. And, but that's the beauty of it is that when you get to those lows, they're gone and they're gone for good. When you really tap into the process and feel it physically leave your body. And so, I know now, I didn't know then, but I know now it was part of my soul contract to be a um, practitioner for Believe and to be, you know, one of the very privileged um, people to be able to share this process with others and help them. You know, I've always had a passion to help people, but I could never find out what, how could I actually do that? You know, was it through... Um, you know, massage? Was it through Reiki? Was it through sharing amazing products? You know, it was all of those things. Um, and then as, as it does, the right thing comes along and it just falls into place. So being able to have been on the receiving end of the process and feeling um, as good as I do every, pretty much every single day, you know, I'm, a, I'm human. There are people that come in and interrupt this balanced way of living um, but I don't stay there anymore and when I see so many people struggling every single day um, with you know low vibration emotions that are just weighing them down and I know that on the other side of that is so much hope and so much wonder and so much joy that they can connect to and seeing people being able to just have that relief come off their face when I talk to them about the process and help them um, connect to who they really really are and they're not they're not these emotions they are somebody you know completely different um, absolutely full of positivity and um, pure love but when the you know the fear is pulling them down they're, they're out of balance mm. and as I believe uh, practitioner you know, I'm able to connect them to the truth of them. I'm able to hold their vibration so they can 
really feel who they are. And that is just something just so, well, it's magical, isn't it? It's just a magical um, gift, if you like, ability to be able to help people do that, as you guys know, when you're helping your clients too. And so this is just, it's just growing every single day, you know, I'm expanding and then being able to then support others and the right people just come along. You know, it doesn't feel as though I'm having to kind of graft at it. It's, you know, the right people will come along and connect with you. And being in the community that we are now, being connected with like-minded souls, there's not that many people in my immediate circle that understand what I do, you know, even in this house, <laughs> you know, um, and that's, but it's actually okay. I, you know, I, I don't have to worry about what they think. They know I haven't lost the plot, you know, whoever, if I'm walking around talking to my higher self or, you know, acknowledging things, um, they're, they're okay they're they're with me they love me regardless and that's the beauty of of um being okay with who you are that's the beauty of being able to set the truth about who you really are mm. and um as Liz was saying you, you don't get agitated by other people's disconnection mm. you're able to manage that and um show them compassion mm. you know i've been surrounded by an immediate family as well as you know, surrounding family, people that have had real struggles, whether it be with um, abuse, whether it be with addictions, um, behaviour. And even though I've been on the receiving end of that, I'm still able to um, show compassion. And I feel completely different now about being on the receiving end, as opposed, as you say, oh, woe is me. Oh, this shouldn't happen to me. This isn't my fault. Um, I totally get that it's not my fault, but it's my responsibility. Mm. And and that's you know that one line just completely changed everything for me. Yeah, it it is. It's powerful, isn't it? It's like when you can say with conviction, it wasn't my fault, but it is my responsibility yeah. in terms of how I then let everything that's happened to me affect me. It's my mm. responsibility to, yeah, what I do with all of these feelings and emotions. Um, it, it it just kind of flips something, doesn't it? And it, and it yeah. really changes it. So would you say, Karen, that you have always been a spiritual person or is this something quite new to you? I, I've, I would say I've always been spiritual. I guess what I didn't understand growing up was actually what did that mean? Yeah. You know, and, you know, I grew up a Catholic, so therefore it was given to me in a completely different context yeah. And, you know, I went to an all girls school. It was run by nuns and there was a lot of fear built up yeah. around that. And part of my journey was to actually undo a lot of those fears yeah. around God, around, you know, um, non-physical, yeah. around what that meant. And, and again, now I can see why I can see why that's happened to me because it's all part of my journey, you know, my main guide is is Jesus Christ and therefore you know it's like say that out loud I'm gonna say that out loud right and it's it's like people that I went to school with would think I've got, lost the plot <laughs> but you know I feel his energy I can connect yeah. to him and and God you know I can yeah. receive messages through my higher self from God and Again, I would never have said that out loud because I had a fear of God. Yeah. Because it was all, you know, it was it was just sayings. People would say, "Oh God, I put the fear of God into them. They won't do that again." You know, it's just as you grow up, you hear those things, don't you? Yeah. You resonate. Or, or, or um, that kid's got the devil in him. Yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah. you know. So there was a lot of that that I had to really shift, and. I always, always had a curiosity of non-physical. I would go along to um, medium um, gatherings. I love it. But I never used to get a message. And he was like, 
why is no one coming to see me? You know, <laughs> why? <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't ready. Um, and yeah, so it kind of incrementally grew, I guess. I, I connected with angel cards. I would give guidance in my group. And the messages would come back and they'll go, my God, that really resonates with you. So mm. you kind of build confidence, don't you, yeah. with it? And as you're learning and you're growing, um, you would then experience it. And it's only when you know, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of, it's, it's that kind of um, feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, you know, on the other side of this, the things that I've been able to do that I probably don't think I would have even bothered trying so cooking's got better but what Lindsay was say I can cook now because I go about it in a different way um I write poetry oh my goodness I just about passed English at school and now I'm I'm writing poetry that's you know that actually rhymes and makes sense and it's like where where is this all coming from a painting and making things and there's been a real I've been, always been quite creative, but there's been a real burst of creativity mm. that's coming from um, this whole process. And understanding nature, as you know, yeah, it's like our happy place. So uh -huh. that's, you know, I'm, I'm out there talking to the birds and it's like, it's so nice. <laughs> but it's just, just the simple things. I think yeah. you know, it, I have really resonated with the simple things of life rather than, the rat race of life yeah um yeah. and i feel i get so much joy out of connecting to those things now yeah. as opposed to you know a car or you know we all want nice things but i don't know i just don't get the same buzz as yeah. i do out of the other things yeah i hope that makes sense it does make sense <laughs> yeah. it makes a lot of sense so karen what's the best way for um people to connect with you um if they're interested in exploring working with you oh it's very easy holistic happy place um dot co dot uk um facebook web page um even instagram I haven't quite ventured to TikTok yet. I don't think I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> no. I keep looking at it and thinking, shall no. I? No. No. <laughs> My husband loves technology. He loves anything like this. And um, he's going, oh, you should get on TikTok. And I'm going, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Karen. And I can I can so resonate with um, what both of you uh, have shared in relation to the cooking, um, because um, I didn't realise that um, I've I've always when I've always cooked with my higher self. She's always guided me when I've been cooking. Now, for many years, I would just get in the kitchen, have a look what's in the cupboard and, and make a meal. And 99% of the time, it would turn out to be really good. And then I went through a phase of, um, I need to be able to cook properly. So I need to look at recipes and follow recipes. And whenever I followed recipes, the meal would turn out disastrous. And I convinced myself that I couldn't cook. And then during, um, during the challenge that we were all a part of um, with fifth, fifth Dimension Earth, part of the challenge was tuning into your higher self and uh, guide, uh, asking for their guidance with cooking. And I had been attempting to make the perfect healthy granola bars um i do have a sweet tooth but i like to, i like to try and be healthy as well so all the recipes that i'd followed it was you know it would come out and it would just fall apart it wouldn't taste right so i just i just tuned in with my higher self and i was like okay guide me tell me what i do and i didn't measure anything i just got this i just got that and i just and it was like oh my god <laughs> these taste amazing yeah so, so that's satisfying. just it is that was just that's just one of the 
one of the um, the 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 small um, gifts that I've had from from this process and connecting with my higher self. I think one of the things that um, has really blown me away recently is the uh, connection to energy that I have and the abilities that I have to share um, energetic healing with others and I think when because I, I tuned into one of my guides is Abraham of and most people who follow Esther um, and Abraham Hicks will have heard of Abraham as the collective consciousness well one of my guides is Abraham the ascended soul and he shared with me that um you know i've I, i've got something very specific i want you to be able to tap into and and to be sharing with others and when i was out walking in nature one day it was like i had this massive download of exactly how i needed to do it and i was like but i don't i don't feel ready what, 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 you know i could just be making this up um but there was something in me that just trusted the process and trusted the guidance that I was getting and and I've sort of tested it out a bit and and Lindsay you've been in my first group um where I've been sharing two practices each week emotional um energy healing and physical energy healing and I even I'm just kind of blown away about wow it really does work <laughs> It's really quite amazing. So Eve, I feel like I'm on the start of um, a new journey for myself as I've, I, and I resonated a lot with what you were saying, Karen, around having to unlearn the way that we know things and have done things. So I've had to make a lot of, um, almost like, detach myself from everything that I knew um, in order to be able to feel into this new truth this new way of being so I, I qualified as a, an emotional freedom technique practitioner uh, I think that was coming up to four and a half years ago now and I had some amazing results with the clients that I was working with and yet last year it was like I can't work like this anymore because it's it's only giving people a little bit of taste of freedom it's not unlocking the fullness of the freedom that they can get to experience and know from working with your higher self so it was you know last year it was like i was like i don't know what to do i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing i just know i can't work in the way that i have and then suddenly as i've been able to focus on on my own healing it's really starting to come together and my journey at the moment is to help others to really understand that relationship with their higher self and how having that relationship can help them in their own healing process um, so I'm really excited having tested my healing abilities in 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 quite a small uh, group to be stepping out and sharing that publicly now so next Thursday at 1.30 if anyone wants to join me I'm going to be sharing a live emotional and physical healing session and then from Thursday the 11th of June at 1.30 each week I will be um, sharing emotional and physical healing uh, for anyone who wants to sign up and join and that will be each week for £15 and I'm really excited. I can't, I can't wait because I know that that's just the springboard for how I'm going to be working with people in the future. And just, I, I know like all of us, we are 
we've got a weekend of spiritual expansion coming up with the gathering <laughs> and I think none of us quite know where we're going to be this time next week what other gifts and ability well not gifts what other abilities are going to be unlocked so watch this space because this is who I am now who I'm going to be in a week's time or a few weeks time could be completely different. Thank you so much um, for watching and thank you Karen and Lindsay for joining me. I'm going to unmute you both. Um, so thanks for watching us and we will pop in the comments box any links how we can um, how people can find out more about what you're doing thanks for sharing thank you jane thank you bye 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 bye, bye.